Welcome back to Godot Recipes. This time we're going to be looking at how to make a rolling cube in 3D. Rolling a cube is trickier than it seems at first because we can't rotate the cube around its center. That won't look right. It looks like the edge goes into the ground. What we want to do is rotate it around its edge. Like that. The problem is which edge? Which edge we rotate around depends on which direction we're moving in. If I'm moving to the right like this, I can rotate along the, that right bottom edge. But if I'm moving to the left, I'm going to need to rotate along the bottom left edge. Now in preparing this video, I tried a few different approaches to implementing this rolling. Uh, and there were really three main ones that I experimented with. First the pure math solution where we calculate transforms and rotate the transforms around depending on which edge we're rotating around. Uh, the second approach I used was to put an animation player on the cube and use that to manipulate the pivot point and the rotation. And then lastly I tried it using some helper nodes that we then just move to the right position and then rotate that node. And that last solution is the one I found to be the most flexible, so that's the one I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So here's our node setup. I'm starting with a kinematic body. You could totally do this with an area or with a rigid body, uh, depending on what type of game you're going for. So the changes would be minor. I'm going to stick with the kinematic body. It's simpler, uh, but feel free to experiment. Uh, and then I have a pivot node. This is just a spatial that I'm going to use to be the pivot that we're going to rotate around. And I've made the mesh instance a child of that pivot so that when the pivot rotates, so does the mesh. And we also have our collision shape. And we've got a tween that we're going to use to do the animation. Now, since this cube is always going to be on the ground, I'd like the position of the cube to be the bottom center of the cube, not the center of the cube. So I'm going to take the mesh instance and I'm going to move it up one. And I'm also going to take the collision shape and move it up one. So that way now our cube position right, is right down there at the bottom center. And the pivot is there as well. But the mesh is offset and the collision shape is offset both by one in Y. Okay, so now we're ready to script our movement. And here we're going to break it down into three steps. So the first step is that we need to put the pivot at the corner that we want, at the edge that we want to move in. So say we're moving to the right, we want to take the pivot and move it one unit to the right, and the mesh instance one unit to the left, so everything looks unmoved, but the pivot is now at the correct corner. So that's step one. Step two is to actually animate the rotation. So we'll take the pivot and we'll animate it rotating 90 degrees. And now the cube looks like it's in the right position, but we haven't actually moved the kinematic body. All right, so what we really want at the end is that the kinematic body is two units to the right, since the cube is a size of two. And so we're going to, as the third step, put our kinematic body two units to the right, and then reset everything. So the pivot rotation gets undone, its movement gets undone, and the mesh instance also gets undone, right? And now everything is reset back where we started with the pivot at the bottom center. Everything is good, but our cube has moved two units to the right. So let's look at our script. So we've attached a script to our kinematic body, and we have a variable here called speed that's going to be how fast you roll. So you can increase or decrease that to change your rolling speed. I've got a couple of variables here to reference the various nodes, the pivot node, the mesh node, and the tween node. And then in our physics process, we're going to check the keys so that we can you know, hold down the right arrow key and we will keep rolling continuously till we let go. So we're just going to check the inputs here and each one will call the roll function to roll in that direction. Now let's look at the roll function. So the first thing we're going to do is, if the tween is active, that means we're in the middle of an animation. We're rolling to a new spot, so we don't want to start rolling again until that finishes. So if the tween is active, we're going to just return. 
and then we're going to do those three steps I talked about. So the first step is to offset the pivot and the mesh. Right? The pivot, if we're moving right, we offset the pivot to the right and the mesh in the opposite direction. And then step two is to animate that rotation. So we want to rotate the pivot around the right axis. And so the axis we're going to get is the direction we're going the cross product with the down vector is going to give us the axis we want to rotate around. And then we interpolate that property the transform basis of the pivot from its starting position to its itself rotated 90 degrees around that axis. Uh, how long it's going to take is 1 divided by speed, so you make that speed number bigger, it will happen faster. And then I highly recommend you play around with which transition types you use. I like the way the quad one looks, but you can go crazy with all of them and try them out, like even do the bounce one where it'll bounce when it hits the end and so on. We start the tween and then we wait for it to finish. So that once the tween is finished, then we can do step three, which is to put everything back and be ready for the next move. So we actually move the kinematic body two spaces in the direction, stick the pivot back at 0, 0, 0, stick the mesh back at its original starting position, which was one unit up. Okay. And now everything will be reset and ready to start again. So let's look at how that looks. Okay, if we try it out on our test scene here, you'll see that we're almost there, but there's one thing that's a little odd. The cube is rolling, you might notice that it's, it's squishing a little bit. You can especially see it when we move to the side. See that, that it shrinks a little bit and then expands again as it rolls? Well, the reason that's happening is because of the way the tween is interpolating the basis from its zero rotation to its 90 rotation. And we can actually see this if we set it a little slower and make the speed a little slower. You can see how it's shrinking and then growing again. And there's a couple of different ways we can fix that. One is that we could go into our script here and instead of rotating the full 90 degrees, we could rotate 40 and then an, uh, 45 and then another 45. And that would work fine. What I don't like about that is having two separate interpolations means you can't really it makes it messy to deal with the different transitions and getting a smooth if, if you don't use linear, you're not going to get a smooth rotation. So what's better is to take the take that tween node and connect its tween step signal. And that tween step signal is called every frame while the tween is running. And so what we'll do there is we'll just tell that to take the pivot.transform and orthonormalize it, which is the same as resetting its scale. It's, remember, the basis takes into account the rotation and the scale. We want the scale to get reset. And that's going to fix that problem. Now you'll see I left it on the slow motion, so now it just looks like it's rotating all the way around. Um, now you might also notice that the other problem we have is that if your texture of your cube is not symmetrical, then you see it's got this little text up here in the corner. After I move, the rotation of the mesh resets, so it looks like it snaps back. And if your cube were, say, different colors on each side, you'd also have that problem too, where you want to see, you want that rotation to be preserved. And we could do that in a couple of ways. We could add another pivot node around the mesh instance that that we can then keep the rotation or we can reset the rotation or preserve that rotation at the end after we rotate and that's what we're going to do is we're just going to go here to that step three and we're going to add a couple of lines that will as it's resetting preserve that rotation of the me of the mesh so we grab its global basis. It's basis in global space. And then reset everything. 
right? Resetting the pivot resets the rotation of the mesh, but then we can stick it back here by applying that basis again. So now everything gets moved to the right place, but we preserve that rotation that the mesh made. And now if we run it, you'll see that the mesh stays rotated, but we have a problem the next time we rotate, right? The mesh gets offset weird, and that's because the mesh is rotated. So up here, when we translated it, now it's translating in the wrong direction. So we need to make this global uh, translate. And then we translate it without taking into account the rotation. And now we see that rotation gets preserved. The mesh will be oriented so that the texture looks right no matter how we roll. OK, one last thing I want to talk about, and that's collisions. So these red cubes are static bodies. And of course, I'm going to pass right through them because we're not using move and slide or move and collide to move our kinematic body. We're just advancing it two units. And so we're going to be going through these solid objects. And really, this is grid-based movement, right? We don't want to move any half increments or anything like that. We want to move exactly two units every time we move. So we don't really need collisions in the sense of move until you hit something. We need just, you can roll there or you can't. The space you want to move into is occupied or it isn't. And so we can fix that if we go to our cubes code. And remember, we could be doing this with a kinematic body or any other, other kind of uh, body as well. So we're going to just cast a ray forward. So we get the world space. And we call intersect ray with from the middle of our cube to something forward in that direction. And instead of multiplying by 2, I'm multiplying by 2.5 to give us a little extra margin. Because we might be offset from an object by 1. And we don't want to roll into that one either. And then self just excludes the kinematic body itself from the ray collision. And if we get a collision, we return. So that means you can't move there. So you're not allowed to move. And that's all we need to do to make it so that those cubes will be solid. Now if I go over here and I'm holding down the key, I can't, can't go through this cube from any direction. All right, that's it. So I hope this gives you some cool ideas for things to do with rolling cubes in your game. You can see I've done some examples here. I've got a big enemy cube rolling around there. I've made some uh, squares with gr a grid map that you can roll on and change their color. All sorts of things you can do. Uh, drop off here, make it fall down to the next level, and so on. Let me know in the comments what you come up with. I look forward to seeing them, and I'll see you in the next video.